Janelle Bakirova presents a series of discussions about the place of Kazakh culture in the global world. Meetings with prominent public figures, candid conversations, collisions of opinions, and discussions about the most important things. Hello, dear friends. Today we are having a wonderful guest in our program, Saken Sefulin. The descendants of the great most often carry a heavy burden. People closely watch them and involuntarily compare them with their outstanding predecessors. Saken Sefulin, our contemporary, is lucky. He bears the name of his famous grandfather with dignity. He's a businessman, philanthropist, and at the same time, a very modest person who does not seek publicity. Our guest turned out to be one of those rare people who underestimate their own achievements, especially the ones in the past. But I know how much he did for the country's economy, especially during the period of its formation. And I'm interested in the change in the trajectory of his views and values, which came with age and experience. Hello, Sakin. Hello, Jania. I feel a bit uneasy realizing that you're coming from a very famous dynasty. Your name is Sakin Sefulin, just like your grandfather Sakin Sefulin, the pride of Kazakh literature, a famous great person, well known both in our country and in the world. And it's really peculiar. You're coming from this dynasty and you're a very famous businessman. I know you as a deeply spiritual person who honors the memory of ancestors, who thinks a lot about Kazakh history, Kazakh culture, and I'm very interested in your life experiences, in your worldview. So, today we'll be talking with you on a variety of topics. If you think about it, you were supposed to be a writer, a journalist. After all, you should have inherited it over to... Over generations. Over two generations. However, it looks like you're more of an entrepreneur, a businessman. I do not consider myself a business person. It was just that at one time I was engaged in the food industry. I had a passion for this that completely captured me for as long as 10 years. It was insanely exciting and interesting. And now I try to pay more attention to my family, relatives, friends, fellow countrymen, my children and grandchildren. In some things, I'm probably late, but in other things, on the contrary, my attention is focused exactly where it is mostly needed. Did it ever occur to you that some kind of victim behavior is intrinsic in our generation? That we have dedicated so much of our time, passion, and in general energy to the state and public service? That we all strive to get busy, to feel needed, to work in the public sphere? And for this reason, we sometimes lack in ordinary life not paying enough attention to our families and children. But it was so natural for us. We just had to do so much at once, and it was impossible to live at a slower pace. Yes, that is right. Life has always been uneven and bumpy. Especially in the 90s and in the 2000s, our lives were intense. Because of certain circumstances, I never devoted enough time to my family and friends. Now I'm trying to compensate for this. And our generation is certainly an interesting one because we, in fact, have lived half of our lives in another country, and now we live in a completely different one, a different country and a different era. On the one hand, we may have been lucky, but on the other hand, not everyone succeeded in finding their own place in life, feeling confused because of all the changes. Why can someone succeed in finding their own place and others can't? You know, I constantly communicate with all kinds of people. There are those who cannot adjust at the age of 15, and there are others who can't readjust at the age of 30. This is probably very individual. On the other hand, I respect people who began to engage in science in their youth and are still doing it, having managed to maintain an interest in this matter. 
как-то вот и смог удержать. У меня один друг есть. Он... I have one friend. He has a PhD. He is a professor. He was engaged in science all his life. At one time, however, to maintain the financial well-being of the family, he was selling cars. But he did not give up science, and now he is a very respected scientist. I read that you're the deputy chairman of the Kazakhstan Chess Federation. What does this mean to you? It was a long time ago, but of course, chess means a lot to me. At one time, I was very active in this area. I was also the president of the Chess Federation of Kazakhstan. I was a member of the national team of Kazakhstan, and then I was the head coach of the children's and youth chess team of Kazakhstan. At some time, I was an international referee. Amazing. Yes, but this is in the past already. Now I only watch major tournaments live. I'm very keen. Although, of course, chess helped me a lot in my life. I believe that this game allows you to establish some kind of a unique model of communication with the world, that it makes you understand certain things better. Yes. Did it happen to you? Has chess helped you run your company? After all, you've been supervising some large teams. So did you ever use chess skills on real-life scenarios? Chess really helped me in my business. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was an outstanding grandmaster, chess theorist Aron Nimcevich. He had a book called My System, and in that book he described a lot of principles that can apply to ordinary life too. For example, strong point defense or overprotection and much more. I used these postulates in business, and you know, everything worked out. Tell me then, which is most important, technology or human potential? No. Of course, people are more important. Communication with others is generally a very important thing. For example, you always need to be working with people who are better than you, because then you are sorted. Better than you in terms of professional knowledge or human qualities. But technology also needs to be taken at the highest level. It's more expensive, but... Uh, better in a long-term perspective. But it's not a problem. I also think that everything... Everything. That is better to learn how to play on a good guitar rather than on a bad one. Well, it seems like we need to return to the topic of culture because the program's main focus is issues related to culture. So, I know that you have a music background and you're clearly not indifferent to issues of culture and art. What do you think about things that are happening to us currently? You know, on the one hand, culture has become more accessible. I remember studying at a music school and I didn't always know how the piece should sound. At first, I would take it apart and learn it. And now it is enough to look up on the internet and it will immediately become clear. How it should sound? How it should sound and what tempo it should be played. And before there was no way to know? You wouldn't know back then. But did you enjoy the school? I didn't like it up until the fifth grade and then in the fifth, sixth and seventh grades I became very keen. Keen. I wanted to proceed with my music studies, but my parents were hesitant. They didn't support you? They didn't, and I am still full of regrets about the fact that I haven't gotten a degree in music studies. You played the piano? Yes, exactly. I graduated from a standard seven-year school, and I liked it. Actually, I have more memories of my music school rather than of my regular school, and this is really peculiar. There was lots of kindness in my music school. It was special. What do you find in music? On the one hand, it is a peace haven. On the other, an opportunity to tune yourself for something positive. I usually listen to music for three to four hours. What do you listen to? Piano music, most of all. 
Oh, really? Yes. How fascinating, because usually people listen to rock. No, I usually listen to piano music. I like it very much. Look, we've never talked about it, you and I. I can listen to piano music for days on end. Do you know it? Yes, Bach, Beethoven. Well, not necessarily Bach. Beethoven. I often listen to Beethoven and Schubert. This is huge. And Tchaikovsky, and others too, a little bit. Mendelssohn, fascinating. I love Chopin very much. Chopin, of course. Exactly. I love this music so much. I have a friend in Germany. He has an amazing family. He's a lawyer, his wife is a school teacher. I think she teaches in elementary grades. And they are extremely cultured, or rather musical. He says that he and his wife consciously and thoughtfully listen to classical music two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. And a day without music is an empty day for them. I believe that playing music, for example, helps to build completely different relationships with others. Music develops a sense of beauty and the emotional range of a person expands. So music is very much needed. You don't even know when it might come in handy, but life is always about being prepared for a change. So this will always come in handy. In general, I have an instrument at home because I really like it when someone comes and plays, even if not very well, I can still listen with pleasure. And derive pleasure. I am very enthusiastic about it. You perhaps want to ask me something? Yes, when I was driving here, I wanted to ask, just casually, but how did you get such a huge desire to play and study in senior classes? Play for eight to ten hours a day. What motivated you to that extent? Did you just want to get good grades, or did you already see the seed of a famous pianist in you? What was it? 
Great question, and I will answer approximately in the same way as you did when I asked you about business. In general, we are all driven by passion. This is definitely the same passion that our teachers ignite in us. At first, it's a small spark of interest, but then it turns into a real hobby and sometimes a vocation. And you know, it doesn't matter at all what the result will be. The whole point is in the process of experiencing these feelings, overcoming these difficulties, striving for this high unattainable result. Oddly enough, this is what drives me. It never mattered to me whether I became a great pianist or not. In Kazakhstan, we're not brought up to just focus on becoming world stars. We have a rather reserved attitude to our capabilities. And when I arrived in Moscow, there was generally a feeling that we were just some kind of pygmies. I was surrounded by geniuses. But one day, you just outgrow all this. You begin to understand that you're worth a lot, and you seem to hear something inside yourself, and you want to adequately take it out. And this feeling, it seems to me, keeps you going for your entire life, when you manage to transfer something from your own inner world to the outer material world. I mean, when you transfer your internal energy from the non-material internal spiritual world via these magical sounds. Moreover, it's not only beautiful music, it consists of a lot of things, technique, your abilities, concentration, and psychic energy. This is an extremely exciting process, and fortunately, it keeps me going and does not let me go. Tell me, are you a frequent visitor? You mean in our motherland? Theaters, exhibitions, concerts. Oh, theaters. Why not? Since childhood, I had some wrong inner attitude towards opera, and I decided to fix this. Get acquainted. Yes, fix it. And you became a theater goer? Yes, three times a year I go to the opera. In general, before the pandemic, I had a rule once a month I attended a theater or a concert. And in general, I have not even once diverted from this tradition. Oh, really? Every month it is either artist shock, some kind of unusual concert. And Philharmonic? I attended Yerkesh Shakev's concert there. Wow, incredible. Yes, once a month. Once a month is huge. Some people don't go anywhere for years. This is amazing. So basically, you know the cultural ropes of the city, right? Yes. At a certain period of time, I would also attend museums constantly. There are many small museums in the city dedicated to some outstanding people. You come in and it turns out to be so interesting. And usually you can get an individual tour. And this is amazing. People don't attend those places often. There are always very few people there. I was also surprised to find out that in Almaty... There are so many theaters? There are more than 20 private galleries. Oh, galleries, yes. There are so many, and I also visited them. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. Are you a big connoisseur of arts? Do you know a lot about it? Well, I'm not very well versed in arts. It's all about whether I like it or not. And this is right. Well, yes. And you know, I once attended the love drink in our Almaty Opera House. Donizetti? Yes, and I attended the same performance in Vienna State Opera, and I liked ours more. Easy. You know, I was even unpleasantly struck by the wretchedness of the scenery. They would only change the backdrop and the clothes of the main characters. And in our production, everything is so bright, colorful, the decorations are complex. So we have something to be proud of, so to speak. Yes, 200%. All my life I've been proving this with my concerts, the success of our students and our outstanding artists. Once I was at the Grand Opera in Paris, and this is the brand. I attended Italian in Algeria, and it seems that I've never seen anything more boring in my life. 
The choir was more or less okay and the soloist sang out of tune. I thought to myself, where am I? Am I really in Paris at the Grand Opera? Then I went to Covent Garden. I was invited to Alice in Wonderland. And this was such a great modern ballet and it was a fairy tale. It was staged at a high technological and performance level. And what decorations, what artists. The performance made a tremendous impression on me. So it depends, you know. Yes. But you're right, no one expects anything extraordinary from us. So the public are always so surprised that we have a great symphony orchestra, that we have outstanding performances in the opera, we have a strong belly company, we have museums, we have modern theatres and independent theatres and private creative initiatives, which are incredible. And then we have quite a lot of support provided by the state to cultural institutions. And this says a lot about the quality of our culture.
Thank you very much, Sakyan, for meeting me today. It was a very pleasant conversation. I've long dreamed of inviting you, and today my dream has come true. Yes, this was unexpected. Thank you. You're always a great person to talk to. And we will do this again. Absolutely.